Lesson 10 homework. Number one, add. Two and a half plus one and one fifth. So I'm gonna start by finding my common denominator for two and five. So I'm gonna list the multiples for two and for five until I find one that they have in common. Okay, so I see that they both have 10. So now what I need to do is take my two and a half, and since I have one half, to mul I need to multiply two by five to get 10. So I'm still working towards that common denominator. So two times five is gonna get me 10. For the one and one fifth, five times two, so two halves is gonna get me 10. And when I multiply these out, I'll have two and one times five is five, two times five is 10, so two and five tenths, plus one and one times two is two, and five times two is 10. So I will get two plus one, the whole numbers, that's three, five tenths plus two tenths is seven tenths, so three and seven tenths. B, two and a half plus three and, or two and a half, plus one and three fifths. Now, we have two and five here, which we just did. So we already know the common denominator is gonna be 10. So I'm not gonna waste time doing that. So in order to make two and a half into fifths, or sorry, tenths, I need to multiply it by five fifths. And to make one and three fifths into tenths, five times two is 10. So I'm gonna multiply by two halves. If I multiply it out, I get two and five tenths plus one and three times two is six, five times two is 10, six tenths. So we'll have three and five tenths plus six tenths is 11 tenths. That's an improper fraction, so I need to take out a 10 tenth. So we'll have three plus 10 tenths, which is really equal to one plus one tenth. So we get four and one tenth. C, one and one fifth plus three and one third. So list the multiples for five and three. as our common denominator. So we'll have one and one fifth times, five times three is 15, so I'm gonna multiply by three thirds plus three and one third times three times five is 15. Now, remember we're multiplying by three thirds because that's equal to one, and we're multiplying by five fifths because that's equal to one and we're looking for equivalent fractions. So if I'm, what I'm really multiplying here is one and one fifth times one. So I'm gonna end up with something that is the same as one and one fifth. Because when you multiply anything by one, you get itself. So that is why it's always going to be three thirds or four fourths or five fifths or six sixths because we're looking for something that is equivalent to the original number, just with an equivalent denominator to the other number. So one and one fifth times three thirds, that's gonna be one and three fifteenths. And one and three fifteenths is equal to one and one fifth plus three and five fifteenths. Those added together are four and eight fifteenths. Now letter D, three and five. So again, we already know our common denominator is 15. So we're gonna have three and two thirds. I'm gonna multiply it by five fifths to get 15 as our denominator, plus one and three fifths, five times three is 15, so three thirds. So we're gonna have three and two times five is 10 fifteenths, plus one and three times three is nine fifteenths. I didn't need those parentheses, but they're okay there. 
So if we add that together, I'm going to get 4 and 19 fifteenths. That's an improper fraction. I'm going to take out 15 fifteenths, which is equal to just 1. And 15 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths was the 19 fifteenths. So we're going to end up with 5 and 4 fifteenths. E, 2 and 1 third plus 4 and 4 sevenths. 3 and 7. 3, 6, 9, 12. Still don't see one, so I'm going to keep going with 15 because we haven't gotten to 21 yet. And 21 is going to be our common denominator. So we need to multiply 3 times 7 to get 21. Plus 4 and 4 sevenths, 7 times 3 is 21. So we'll have 2 and... 7 21st plus 4 and 12 21st. 2 plus 4 is 6 and 7 21st plus 12 21st is 19 21st. So 6 and 19 21st. And 7 and 3 again would, so our common denominator is going to be 21 for f. So 3 and 5 sevenths times to get a denominator of 21, we need to multiply by 3 thirds. So 4 and 2 thirds, 3 times 7 is 21. When we multiply it out, we'll have 3, and 5 times 3 is 15 21st, plus 4 and 14 21st. That gives us 7 and 15 21st plus 14 21st is 29 21st. Now that's an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So I'm going to take out 21 21st. So we'll have 7 plus 21 21st. 21 21st plus 8 21st get, got us, gets us the 29 which we started with. Now 21 21st is equal to 1. So we have 7 plus 1 plus 8 21st is equal to 8 and 8 21st. G, 15 and 1 fifth plus 4 and 3 eighths. So let's find a common denominator for 5 and 8. Don't see anything yet. Still nothing. But 40. So 40 is our common denominator. So we're looking to make 1 fifth into 40 -ths. To do that, we need to multiply 5 by 8. So it's times 8 eighths plus 4 and 3 eighths times 8 times 5 is 40, so 5 fifths, and we'll have 15 and 8 fortieths plus 4 and 15 fortieths. That will be equal to 15 plus 4 is 19, 8 plus 15 is 23 fortieths, so 19 and 23 fortieths. And then H, our common denominator, we already know, we did it over here. It's going to be 40. So we have 18 and 3 eighths. We need to multiply 8 by 5 to get 40, so 5 fifths. And then 2 and 2 fifths. We need to multiply 5 times 8 to get 40, so we're going to have 8 eighths. 18, 3 times 5 is 15, 8 times 5 is 40th, so 18 and 15 40th plus 2 and 2 times 8 is 16. 5 times 8 is 40. If we add those together, we're going to have 18 plus 2 is 20. 15 40th plus 16 40th is 31 
fortieths. So we have twenty and thirty-one fortieths. Number two, Angela practiced piano for two and a half hours on Friday, two and one third hours on Saturday, and three and two thirds hours on Sunday. How much time did Angela practice the piano during the weekend? So we need to add these three times together. So two and a half plus two and a third plus three and two thirds. And we need to find a common denominator. All right, we have two, three, and three. So we just need to find a common denominator for two and three. Jumped all the way to six. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And six will be our common denominator. So instead of having two numbers to convert here, I'm going to have three. So we have two and a half. To make halves into six, I need to multiply by three thirds. And then we have two and one third. Three times two would get us six. So two halves plus three and two thirds. Three times two would get us six. So two halves. So then two and a half, so two, two and a half times three thirds, we would get three sixths plus two and one times two is two, three times two is six, two and two sixths plus three and two times two is four, three times two is six, four sixths. If we add all of those together, I'll add the whole numbers first, two plus two plus three is seven. 3 6 plus 2 6 is 5 6. 5 6 plus 4 6 is 9 6. Now that's an improper fraction. So what I need to do is take 7. I'm going to take out 6 6. And 6 6 plus another 3 6 is the 9 6. 6 6 is 1. So we really have 8 and 3 6. And then 3 6 can be reduced one half so we have eight and a half hours number three string a is three and five six meters long string b is two and one fourth meters long what's the total length of both strings so to find the total length of both strings we need to add these together so three and five six plus two and one fourth Let's find our common denominator. And it's going to be 12. So 3 and 5 6. In order to make 6 into 12, I need to multiply it by 2. And to make fourths into 12, I need to multiply it by 3. So we end up with 3 and 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2, and 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. We get 3 plus 2 is 5, 10 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 13 twelfths. So that's an improper fraction, so we're going to take out 12 twelfths. 12 twelfths plus 1 twelfth was the 13 twelfths. So we have 6 and one twelfth meters. Matt says that one five minus one and one fourth will be more than four since five minus one is four. Draw a picture to prove that Matt is wrong. So I'm going to use a number line as my picture. So we have five. So if we do 5 and we subtract 1, but then we still need to subtract 1 fourth. So I'm going to break these into fourths. So if I subtract 1 more fourth, I end up with here, which is equal to 3 and 3 fourths. So Matt is wrong because 3 and 3 fourths is less than 4, not more than 4. 